Hi everyone and welcome to a special outdoors edition of Southside Dodge Rebels this week. We're at the scene of one of my favorite Red Deer sporting events, the third annual Tommy Guns Outdoor Winter Classic Midget Tournament. We'll tell you more about this fantastic event a little bit later on in today's show. But let's kick things off right now by getting to this past week's highlights, starting with a Friday night matchup at the NMAX Centrium versus the Brandon Wheat Kings. Wheat Kings goalie Corbin Bow sets the tone early in this one, stopping the two on one chance from Reese Dino. John Quenville fires a high riser on net. Patrick Bartisak snags that one easily. Some fans in the stands catch pucks. This fellow caught a stick. Puck bounces around the net for the longest time. Neither team able to get a handle on it until former Rebel Chad Robinson finds it and buries his 11th goal of the season, putting the Wheaties up 1-0. Rebels tie it up later in the first when Joel Hamilton wins a race to the loose puck and lofts a wrister past Bo's high glove side. That's Joel's seventh of the year, it's 1-1. Brooks Maxwell tries to give the Rebels the lead in the second period, but Bowes makes a fine glove save. Maxwell can't believe he missed that one. Close call here as the puck comes toward Bartosak. Hayden Fleury nearly tips it into his own net, but Patrick manages to clear. Tim McGauley charges in, but is foiled by a fine defensive play by Cody Teal. Dominic Volek shoots and is stopped. Wyatt Johnson can't convert the rebound. Patrick Bartosak has made many fine saves this year, but none finer than this. A spectacular diving effort on Quenville. I can't pronounce the Czech word for Superman, but if I could, I'd use it right now. That was amazing. Volek creates a flurry of activity when he sprays Bowes with some fresh snow. Wheaties didn't like that for some reason. Rebels come as close as you can get to taking the lead, but Connor Bleakley rattles it off the crossbar. Turner Elson blazes in and slides it over to Dino. Once again, he is denied by Bose. Tough call here against the Rebels as Maxwell charges in with the puck on his stick. He's checked into Bose by Ryan Pulak, but Maxwell gets dinged for the goalie interference minor. Thankfully, the Rebels killed off the penalty. Bartisak squeezes down to make this save on McGauley. Then he sprawls out to bar the door on Robinson. This game would require overtime. Less than a minute into the extra frame, Eric Roy cuts into the slot and unleashes a howitzer that beats Bartisak in off the bar. The Wheat Kings harvest the extra point. They win 2-1. You get 40-some shots on net. Um, you know, obviously our goalie made some big saves at critical times, but, you know, you get it to uh, overtime there, and, you, again, we talked about certain things, details in the game, and, uh, you know, the mistakes we made and just in that one play alone the louder. You know, that guy to walk in the slot and score, their def and a defenseman besides that, uh, on top of that. But you know what? Uh, again, we'll take the point. Every point is critical, and we got to find ways to get two points. So, and, uh, you know, and we still need some guys to still be better for us. And we've got to continue to uh, work with them on that and push them to get better. Game data brought to you by 247reddeer.ca as the Rebels played well but simply couldn't beat Corbin Bowles when they had to. So after that disappointing extra time heartbreak, the Rebels were back on home ice one night later taking on their division rivals, the Lethbridge Hurricanes. Patrick Bartisak gets the call as you'd expect in a tilt with huge importance in the standings. Joel Hamilton feeds Tyson Ness on the left wing side. He tries to beat Ty Rimmer short side but hits the Lethbridge goalie in the arm with that shot. Pass out front to Sam McKechnie for the Hurricanes, but Bartisak gets the leg down to make the save. Mike Simpson with the point shot. Bartisak gets the leather out to snag that one. Doesn't get much prettier than that. Scott Fazer gets a glorious chance to open the scoring in this one, but he can't jam it home. Rebound sat loose for a moment before the Hurricanes clear. Brady Gaudet shoots just wide from the slot. Elson with a spinning backhander hits the outside of the net. Albin Bloomquist comes out from the corner and hits the iron trying to score short side. Ness gets the puck and spins and fires only to hit Rimmer in the chest with his shot. Graham Hood shoots from the left wing side but really has nowhere to shoot. Connor Bleakley fires a bit of a knuckle puck toward the net. Matt Valerie gets a stick on it. Then Rimmer does a good job of tracking it down to cover up the rebound. We all like watching Patrick Bartosak make great saves. So here's another one for you, as he gets the pad down to Stone Bloomquist from in tight. Simply superb. Very close call here for the Rebels as Rimmer kicks the puck out front. Ness can't win the race for it. Rimmer finally manages to cover it up. Wow. 
Brady Gaudet's point shot is stopped by Rimmer. Dino beats Rimmer on the rebound, but Jamin Yakubowski bails his goalie out with a huge defensive play. And how many times have we seen this in recent games? Yet another Rebel rings one off the bar. This time it's Ness. Mid-third period now. Hurricanes finally open the scoring as McCoy Urkamps fires a point shot through a crowd past Bartisak for his fifth of the year. The power play marker made it 1-0. Brooks Maxwell tries to beat Rimmer with a wraparound, but can't. Reese Dino was tied up while trying to find the rebound. That drew a penalty. And the Rebels would cash in on the power play thanks to a 4-2 and a snooker tight bounce for Gaudet. His point shot goes off the end boards, off Rimmer's leg, then in. Gaudet's fourth of the year ties it at one. Canes regain their one goal lead when McKechnie takes the puck after Hood's wraparound goes astray. McKechnie scores his 22nd of the year. Lethbridge with a 2-1 lead, less than four minutes to go. Elson tries for some late game heroics, but is turned aside by Rimmer. But the Rebels keep coming, and the puck eventually makes its way to Reese Dino. He finds the back of the net for his 15th of the season. That ties the game 2-2 with 1.32 left. Bedlam in the Centrium. Once again, the Rebels were off to overtime where Elson gets a great chance to win it. Rimmer, however, with other plans. Bloomquist shot first for Lethbridge. Looks like he was trying to go five hole on Bartisak to no avail. Dino tied the game late in the third, and here he puts the Rebels up with a slick backhand deke. one nothing Rebels in the shootout. Brady Ramsey came in next for Lethbridge, tries a backhand deke of his own, but Bartisak would have none of that. Dominic Volek could win it with a goal for the Rebels, but Rimmer gets the pad out on his backhand try. Reed Duke needed the score to keep the Canes alive, comes in from the right side, tries a fancy deke, but Bartisak shuts the door. Rebels win 3-2. It certainly had the intensity and emotion of, uh, of a playoff game, and he expected that with, uh, you know, with these two teams being close in the standings. So, um, you know, and to be down twice in the third and battle back like that and, uh, you know, and eventually win the hockey game is, uh, is obviously kudos to the kids for staying with it. And they played hard tonight. It was, it was a good thing. The Rebels pick up the all-important second point in this game, moving slightly further ahead of Lethbridge in the standings. More on that in a moment. Turner Elson and Reese Dino both closing in on the 20-goal plateau for the Rebels. You can see why earning that extra point on Saturday was huge as the Hurricanes continue applying pressure on the Rebels for third in the division. Kootenay continuing to make a strong charge of their own. It's a big Central Division matchup coming up Thursday night as the Rebels host the Red Hot Kootenay Ice at the NMAC Centrium. Then the boys head south for our Friday night game in Lethbridge. Coming up after the break, Matthew Dumba's on his way home. Suites and seats at the NMAC Centrium are in full use and we talk about this Tommy Guns Outdoor Winter Classic. Hey Red Deer Rebels fans, have we got the show for you. Southside Dodge Rebels This Week is your number one source for everything Rebels. Highlights, interviews, stats, and exclusive behind the scenes features brought to you each and every week by those who have their eye on the Rebels all season long. Southside Dodge Rebels this week, weeknights on Shaw TV. Welcome back to the show. Some great news for the Rebels and their fans on Sunday, as after spending the first week as a healthy scratch up in Minnesota, the Wild have returned defenseman Matthew Dumba to the Rebels for the remainder of the season. Dumba was kept up by the Wild to buy some time for some of their other defensemen to recover from injuries and to gain some valuable professional level practice experience. Dumba will now finish the season in Red Deer. He helps on the power play, he helps in the D zone, he helps all over the ice and it's, it's exciting to have him back because he's a big leader of this team and he helps uh, on the leadership part and plus on the offensive and defensive part of the game and it's just, we're excited to have him back. I'm definitely excited to talk to him about some of the, some of the things he's learned, especially a guy like Suter there and, and uh, that was a pretty, pretty cool to just be in the same locker room as him, let alone pick up some pointers and whatnot and maybe some stories and, and whatever, so yeah, it'll be neat. Well, as we speak, Joe Whitbread is announcing the final game here at the Tommy Guns Outdoor Winter Classic. A few days ago, he sat down with John Harms from Westerner Park to show us the brand new seats and suites at the NMAX Centrium. 
Thanks very much, Troy, with a special guest, the CEO of Westerner Park, John Harms. And we're sitting in section BB, which didn't exist months ago. You had a lot of renovation changes, which, of course, the fans have seen here. We've undergone quite a renovation of the NMAX Centrium. It's been a long eight months to get it done, and we're virtually done as we speak. Uh, so we're thrilled, uh, to, if I can sum it up in one word, to, to have it done now and, and have fans occupying the new seats and the new suites. And uh, the feedback that we're getting is that uh, the project has, has been a great success. Talk about how a project of this magnitude uh, comes your way. Rebels fans know the building, obviously, for Rebels hockey. There's so much more that goes on at Westerner Park and in this building specifically. Talk about how the project, uh, where, did it, where did it come uh, become a necessity to add seats to the building? Well, the expansion of the Centrium has always been in our long-term development plan. And then we had a couple of incidents arise that uh, we, we looked at and they were opportunities for us. And the decision was made that we should proceed with this project at this time. Uh, the first, of course, was the bid for the Memorial Cup for 2013. Uh, unfortunately, we weren't successful in that, but uh, it's it certainly gotten the, the attention of the Western Hockey League now and, and the fact that our our capacity has gone up to 7,250 people for, for hockey. Uh, and the other is some discussions that we've had with the Canadian Curling Association about uh, bringing back events like the Briar and, and other curling type events that they would look to a building with this capacity to host. There's a lot of uh, talk at Rebels games about the uh, the new seats and the and the feel for the suites, which of course you're going to give us a fantastic tour here shortly. Um, can you give uh, give us any specific stats? How many seats exactly were added? What sort of man hours were used? Uh, was it a 24-hour operation on a daily basis? Uh, any sort of stats on the uh, development of the project? Well, it was uh, as I said, an eight-month project. Uh, they figured that there's about 35 to 40,000 man hours went into. The, the project that uh, we see here today. Um, we're sitting in section BB. Uh, on each side we've added 504 seats in the general seating area to the building. Uh, plus there's an additional 254 new seats in the, the suite and club suite area. And from our perspective, a fan's perspective, and people that come to events here at the NMAX Centrium, it seemed to be seamless. I know construction is not seamless, but you managed to get through uh, your, your major event in the year, which is Westerner Days during the summertime. Uh, there's been concerts, there's been activities, agri-trade, which hits in the fall. Talk about getting through all of that without hiccups that are noticeable to the general public. Well, there, there were a lot, of, a lot of stops and starts to the project as we went throughout the, the eight-month period. Uh, our general contractor was great to work with. They realized that we still need the building for, for a lot of things throughout that time period. Uh, graduations, uh, one of the, the big shutdowns was the, the training camp for the Rebels in, in August. Uh, that kicked them out uh, for about a week and a half. And, and we made the decision to take the ice back out after training camp to allow them to continue to work. And they had up until about September 16th to, to be off the ice level with, with all of the heavy lifting that they had to do, and, and they were able to complete that. So. It's truly uh, remarkable when you consider the stairwells and the things, uh, the elevator addition, uh, the foyer reconstruction. I mean, there's the obvious seats and the suites that people see on game night or at concerts or at venue uh, events, but uh, the behind-the-scenes stuff and the engineering is, is truly remarkable to me. Do you mind if we have a look through the suites, which happens to be, uh, I would assume, the piece de resistance of the uh, renovation? Absolutely. Let's go. High up on the second level of the brand new suites at Westerner Park. And John, thanks for the tour. We're inside uh, one of your suite holders, uh, brand new suites, only been open for, for weeks. Tell us about some of the amenities there that we're seeing here. Well, of course, the, the suites all come uh, decorated uh, with the cabinetry and the, the permanent seats installed in the suite. Uh, the rest is entirely up to the suite holder to decorate how they would choose to. Uh, some have gone with stand-up tables and, and stools, others have gone with couches and chairs. Uh, it, it's all a matter of personal preference. Uh, as you see in the suite we're in, they've, they've put up a number of framed jerseys. Uh, a lot of hockey memorabilia ends up on the walls. Uh, and I think they have a, a great time enjoying the decorating as, as they were moving in. 
Uh, most have chosen to install televisions on the walls uh, so they can keep their eye on an NHL game if it happens to be going on. And uh, uh, they're, they're quite varied in the, their looks as you look around all, through all the suites, but uh, they've all done a great job of, of customizing their interiors. Talk about uh, the level of the community and the difference in the community. Who purchases the suites? Some of your clientele, and how do you get a suite for a Rebels or any event at the Westerner? Well, uh, all the suites are leased out on a three-year lease. Uh, they're all owned by businesses of some form from Red Deer or Central Alberta. Uh, we have had uh, an ever-growing wait list for people wanting suites for many, many years now, and the, the addition of the 13 new suites has allowed us to go back to that waiting list and, and offer some of those that have been on the list for up to 10 years uh, the opportunity to, to now get one, and uh, those people readily jumped at the opportunity. So uh, we currently keep a list. It's sitting at about 45 companies today, even after the new suites have been leased out. So there's still a great interest in the community in, in more suites. Um, all, they, all the people need to do is contact Western Park and, and we'll put your name on the wait list. And uh, unfortunately, it's going to be a few years before we get down to your name. Over the years, we've had a, an awful lot of increased uh, people wanting uh, the ability to rent a suite just for one night. And the, the expansion of the Centrium afforded us the opportunity to set one aside that we, we will be renting out on a per night basis. Uh, we've had a lot of interest from companies and people having birthday parties and, and what have you and, and just having the opportunity to, to rent one for one night. So uh, we've listened to the community and, and we're, we're trying it out, see if it works. Let's go have a look. You mind? Let's go. Well, here it is, the big club suite on the end of the lower level of the new suites at Westerner Park. John, uh, this one specifically, you touched on it. This is uh, not for individual companies or businesses, but this one is sold in pairs where, I guess, quote, unquote, Joe Fan can come enjoy a season of Rebels hockey and, and more. That's correct. Uh, in, in discussions with Mr. Sutter over the, the, the design process for this, the, this expansion, uh, he talked about a lot of the arenas in the States and, and some in Canada now that have gone to this club suite concept. And that's what, where fans can buy, you know, two seats, four seats, and uh, not have to put out all the money for, for a big suite uh, and still get the luxury of, of having the, the suite seating. Um, so we designed this into the, the expansion. Uh, it's a 40-seat suite. Um, it's just about sold out. We've got a few left uh, that, are, that are still for sale. Uh, and again, they're on a three-year lease, but you only lease two seats. And you get the uh, hockey tickets included with those, but you also have the, the sole exclusivity to those seats for any of the other events that we have coming to the Centrium. Uh, so you can use it for concerts or, or the like. Um, and and the, the people that have bought seats in here so far uh, are thrilled with it. Um, as you see, we've got a cash bar up here for the fans. And for, for regular season hockey games, we also provide a full course meal for them up here prior to the game. So it, it's an opportunity for them to socialize and, and get something to eat and have a glass of wine and then and watch a hockey game. It's a, it's a really terrific addition, all of it, uh, and so many man hours of work for, for the laborers that are in charge, but I know there was a, some major organizing that went into it, and uh, all to make things better for this venue, which I can only assume for the city of Red Deer uh, offers you the opportunity to present more and larger events when competing with other centers this size and even larger. Can you maybe tell us some secrets, some not secrets of what you're working on or what's coming to the NMAX Centrium, besides hopefully Rebels Hockey till May? <laughs> Well, I think one of the first things you'll see is uh, the week of uh, January 21st, we've got Tragically Hip coming back to Red Deer. Um, the, the fact that our seating capacity now has increased by 1,250 people has, has put us on the map again with, with larger concert promoters uh, who are now looking at Central Alberta as an opportunity, uh, where with the smaller capacity, they, they might not have been able to afford uh, to bring the bigger names in just because they need that capacity to to pay the act. Um, and there's there's a number of other events that we're currently working on. Uh, everything from now through to next spring already where where artists are out looking for venues to tour through and, 
and we're on their radar. So we're excited about that. And uh, we thought that would happen. We'd hoped it would happen, and it is happening. So. Well, Rebels fans, I gave it my best shot. I tried for some secrets. Couldn't get you any secrets from John Harms, the CEO of Westerner Park. Really appreciate the uh, in-depth tour. I, I love this building when it's rocking, as you know, and doing my Rebels thing. I absolutely love it. It's kind of a quiet, eerie feeling here when it's empty. But all the same, thank you for showing us the, the sweet level. Your, uh, your hard efforts have not gone unnoticed by Rebels fans, and we appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Joel. Thanks, John. The place looks great for sure. Time now to check in with another installment of Train Like a Rebel. Here's Jack from 360 Fitness. Hi everyone, Jack here from 360 Fitness Personal Training. Last week we chatted about pre-workout nutrition. Today we're chatting about post-workout nutrition. It's just as important. So you're looking for two sources of energy after your workout. You're looking for a high glycemic carbohydrate, just like a fruit, to replenish your lost energy. And you're looking for a fast absorbing protein, like a whey, to help get your muscles back in action and for helping recovery. Put them all in a blender and make a smoothie out of them, you're good to go. Shoot for about 25 to 30 grams of whey and about one to two scoops of fruit, and you'll be good to go for your next workout. Coming up after the break, we go around the Western Hockey League and tell you more about the Tommy Guns Outdoor Winter Classic. Southside Dodge Rebels This Week is presented by Southside Dodge Chrysler Jeep in Red Deer, Alberta. Welcome back to the show. Time to check in with another installment of the Skill Zone. Here's Jim from Complete Athlete in Sylvan Lake. Hey, it's Jim from Complete Athlete. This week in the Skill Zone, we're going to work on shooting. The funnest part of the game is scoring goals. To do this, one must be able to shoot hard and accurately. Great shooters have quick releases and the ability to shoot while skating. Proper shooting technique involves starting the puck behind the player's body. This allows for proper weight transfer. For the next, the player must bring the puck closer to their body, now enabling them to use their core to shoot the puck. Because the puck travels towards the body, the player can feel the puck on their blade. This allows them the confidence to look at the net and aim while shooting, knowing where the puck is on their stick. More information on shooting or the synthetic ice can be found at completeathlete.ca. Thanks, Jim. Great stuff as always. Time now for news and notes from around the Western Hockey League. And the Kamloops Blazers retired Scott Niedermeyer's number 28 this past Friday night when they hosted the Prince Albert Raiders. Special dignitaries on hand included Scott's former GM in Anaheim, Brian Burke, his former general manager in Kamloops, Bob Brown, and Blazers' current co-owner, Mark Recchi. Also, WHL Commissioner Ron Robinson presented Niedermeyer with the WHL Alumni Achievement Award in the professional hockey category. Struggling through another tough, tumultuous season, the Prince George Cougars made a coaching change this past week. Dean Clark was relieved of his head coaching duties, replaced with former WHL Coach of the Year, Mark Hollick. Under Hollick, the Kootenai Ice made the playoffs in each of his three seasons behind the bench from 2007 to 2010. Hollick most recently served as head coach of the Syracuse Crunch of the American Hockey League. Here's some of the action from the third annual Tommy Guns Outdoor Winter Classic here in the Bauer Community Rinks, right in beautiful Red Deer. And it is one of my favorite events of the year. Just a tremendous job done by a lot of people to make it happen. Here's Al Sim, the co-organizer, to tell us more. Well, we kind of dreamt this up uh, three years ago. It's our third year. And uh, this year our theme is the 1930s NHL, as you can see, with the Pittsburgh Pirates playing the Montreal Canadiens over here. Uh, good times. I lay awake for... 11 months prior to this thing dreaming up new ideas and new things we can do and the jerseys are the cool part where we always want to do something. I probably got three years ahead of myself in jersey ideas and 
And these ones here, you know, Pittsburgh's out here right now. Most people don't even know the Pittsburgh Pirates were in the NHL for a couple, of, two or three years in, in the late 20s and 30s, and neat stuff. This year is uh, the news. We've got oh, the novices, the uh, novice rec division. We invited them to play this year, and uh, little seven and eight year olds. So we created a. Uh, a, uh, the, the Canada Cup series, and it uh, is this Team Russia versus Team Canada, 87 Canada Cup, and the jerseys are the Russia jerseys is CCCP, and we've got the Can uh, Russian and Canadian and American flags here. We do the Russian national anthem before the hockey games, and of course they play Team Canada, and the jerseys all have on the back is Sutter, Brent Sutter 21, Lemieux 66, Rick Tockett, Kevin Dineen, Norman Rochefort. And on, the, and on the Russian side, you've got Gusarov and Fatisov and Larionov, and, and it's pretty cool stuff. Well, that about does it for this week's show. Thanks again to Al and all the organizers here at the Tommy Gun's third annual Outdoor Winter Classic. Check us out, as always, on our website, rebelsthisweek.com. Visit us on Twitter, at Rebels This Week. We'll see you next time. Roach coming in, he scores! Get up Sam Reinhardt trying to charge in back check, but scores! What a play by Sam Reinhardt! Territory Henry gave it away to Leipzig, two on one with Braddy. Three on one, now Patea joining the run. Leipzig right with circle back to Patea, as far as I can play, even from Leipzig, what a goal! To Franzen, looking in front, Hunt denied on the far side by Luke. The drop pass to Foster, back to St. Croix, in front of Cheek, they score! It hits the brakes, pump fakes, and scores. Wow, double stop there on the doorstep. Gerdak comes in, his shot off of Bartizak, big rebound, 